Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at free CAD and sub assemblies in the A2 Plus workbench. So I've been helping out a patron lately with his build with this squat rack. And we've been using the A2 Plus workbench to pull this together. So each of these parts have been created. So if I go over to one of the assemblies here, you can see that we have a number of parts in here, each different parts. And this has been assembled in a single assembly. We then take this assembly and import it into a new file, allowing us to duplicate up the sub assembly, which is this one, as you can see. You can see that there. This one's been duplicated up and placed over this side. And we've continued our build on top of that. So we've started adding more parts on top of that. This allows you to modularize your assemblies, making it a lot easier when you create assemblies and you don't have to duplicate up individual parts. You can make one single assembly and then duplicate that assembly by just saving it off as a sub assembly and then re importing it back in. This will make your workflow so much more easier when you're dealing with large assemblies. So I'd just like to thank my Patreon for allowing me to use these files. Hope you enjoy the video and let's have a look how we would do this. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So we're going to start importing the parts. This one here, this icon, which is add a part from external file that adds a single part. So if you had multiple parts, that will come in as a single part. And that is actually for the sub assemblies, important sub assemblies. We're interested in this one here, the add shapes from external file. So I'm going to click that and then bring in the squat rack parts. So these have all been created by a patron and we can select which parts we want in here. So I'm going to first select the rear post, the front post, the bottom stretcher and the top stretcher. There are probably other parts in here that I want to import with this. We're just going to keep it simple and go for those for the time being. Let's hit import. What FreeCAD is doing now, it's finding those individual parts and importing them in. So what's happened is that the parts have come in and you can see at the top left hand here, we have one that's been already placed and this one is mobile. So I haven't clicked anything yet. This one is mobile. The first one that's placed will be the fixed part, the fixed position part, and we can change that. We always need at least one fixed position part. So I'm just going to click randomly and place these in position on the screen. And this one over here, like so. So we've got our parts in place, ready for assembly. We always need a fixed position part. So one of these is fixed, but I'm going to make this one here the front post fixed. Come over to the left hand side and in the data tab, you will see fixed position and drop this down and set that to true. That is now fixed. If we run the solver against that, it won't move. We can move this part, right click transform. So it's not fixed in this way. It's just fixed when we run the solver. So everything will be constrained to this part. Now we've got this one in here. Let's start doing some constraints. So I'm going to find the bottom piece that runs along here. So if I look, I'm looking around and I'm trying to find the connection points. So here's the connection points here, these two here. This one here is the bottom stretcher. I can transform this if I wanted to, right click and transform and transform it around say around this way. I don't have to, the constraints that I'll add will pull these into position. 
So I'm going to create a constraint against here. To do that, we're going to select, as you can see, these will marry up with these holes. So I'm going to select the outer edge of this hole and then come around and control select the outer edge of this hole, like so. And then we're going to use one of these constraints. So we've got the circle and circle constraint here, which is ideal for this. If I click that, that will connect up to the fixed part. This part is fixed, so it's connected up straight away to that fixed part. And this one isn't. That's a set that. If I click on this one, you'll see that the fixed position is false. If this was true, we'll get an error and we would have to delete that constraint. Now what we need to do is move this back out, right click transform, move this out and connect up the other hole. Let's hit OK. Let's click on this circle, come around and click on this circle and use the circle on circle constraint. We have now placed our part and we've accepted that. I'm now going to place this one here. So I'm going to click on it and check that it's not fixed. Fixed position is false. So that's good. I'm going to leave this one where it is and move it. So I'm going to select this circle and this circle. And when I said and move it, I'm going to allow the constraint to move it. I'm going to use the circle and circle again. And that will pull that into position, but it's round the wrong way. So we can use this flip direction here to rotate it around. So I've rotated it around the other side and I can accept that. So that's in there. I just need to do the other one. Right click, transform on this part, move it out and come in. Hit OK and select this circle and control click this circle and create the constraint against those. It's all good, accept that. And we've constrained our first part in here. So our next part is this one. This is the top stretcher. You can see the position is true. So what happens if I try to constrain this? So let's come in and take this circle and come up to the top and find out where it's going to connect. So I think it's going to connect to here. I'm going to control click this circle and make that constraint, that circle and circle constraint. It will come up with an error saying constraints inconsistent, cannot solve system, please run the conflict finder. We know that that part is fixed, so it won't move. Let's hit OK and accept and run that conflict tool. So over here, we've got this tool here, which is identify conflicting constraints. I'll run that. What will happen is FreeCAD will run through that and find the conflicting constraint. So it's saying about the constraint here and that it has a problem. And it's asking if I want to delete that constraint. Let's hit yes. And that constraint is now deleted. So if I run that again, that constraint will no longer be there. So let's come down and click on this one and come over to the left hand side. We've got fixed position that set this to false. Now that's false. If I take this circle, making sure I've got the edge, go up to the top and control click this circle and make that constraint that constraint will solve and we accept that so that's in position now i've got to position this properly because if i try to solve this using this button here solve the selected bar under constraint and and you'll see that there was a little bit of movement there it actually moved which we don't want see it moved back and that's because this isn't fully constrained to these parts. I'm going to right click on this, transform, and just bring this around so I can see both sides. 
I've constrained this top part here. Now, if I've got a problem and I forget what I've constrained, I can always click on the part, say this part over here or this part, see it highlighting here. I can come in and click on the constraint. And we see that this button has highlighted. I like both constrained parts. These are also available from drop down. And if we come down, we've got the solver there, the view, and highlight both constrained parts. If I click that, these will become transparent and you can see those parts there. So we see that this top part, this top hole here and this one are under constraint, which is great. So what we need to do is just click and take the bottom one, click that, and we come over, control click this one, and create the circle edge constraint. That solves, we have set that, and now we can deal with the other side. So we've got this other side now. So we can click on this one, right click, transform, and we can move it out of the way. Okay, that, and make our constraints. So we take this circle here, come in, control click this circle, and make our constraint and set that. We can constrain the bottom one if we need to, but there's really no need to do that. And we've made our first part. So all the constraints in here, and I'm gonna save it. So what I've done is save this one as our first part. So this is test assembly at the moment. And if I make a new file, and save this file, save as, and set this one to full assembly. I'm gonna import my test assembly now. So I've created assembly, and I'm gonna import this as a sub assembly. And this is where this button here comes in handy. The add a part from external file. We click that, click our sub assembly, which is called test assembly absolutely fine and that will come in and now we've got our assembly in here and we see it on the left hand side here if i click on it it's got a fixed position as true we can take that now and come up and say duplicate it so this button here which is create a duplicate or a2 plus and come down create duplicate part when we click that, we get this part mobile, which we can drop down, say here, and we can put these in line if we wanted to. So I'm not going to use a circle and circle because these will connect together. I can place these in line by saying, taking an edge, this one here, this edge here. And because we've got a fixed part, which is this one, I'm gonna take this edge, control click this edge and use this one this time, which is the axis constraint. The edge has an axis that will pull it into constraint with that edge. So those edges are in line and we'll set that. So we've got that edge in line with this one. That means if I use this tool here, move the selected part under constraint, I can move this one back and forth. I can't bring it this way because it will not lay in line with this edge. So now I can start importing the rest of the bodies. Let's use this one here. Add shapes from external file. I'm going to find the parts and we can start importing the other parts. So I'm going to go for the label stretcher and import that. So I've got this part here. Let's place it down. And my guessing this has got to stretch across here on one of these parts. Let's have a look. I can always take this and right click 
and transform it into place to get an idea of where it's going to sit. So it looks like it's going to sit probably at the top. Yep, it's going to sit up there. Let's OK that. And I can come in and take this circle. Well, first of all, let's make sure this is not fixed. Click on it, fix position false. So now I can take this circle, making sure we get the circle. So clicking on that circle there, which is basically just a circle that's been pocketed through there to make the holes. And we look at this one, control click this circle and use the circle and circle constraint. Let's place that in position. Let's accept that. And now we want to place the other one. So if we take this circle here, and though these are closer, what will happen when we constrain to this one? And use the circle and circle constraint. It will push that forward. So if I zoom out, we can see that's pushed that forward into place because one of these parts is not fixed. And we just accept that. And that's in there now. So what we've got is basically two sub assemblies. And we're starting to import parts that connect up to these sub assemblies. So that's how you would use sub assemblies in the A2 plus workbench. And that makes your life a lot easier because you can duplicate parts, you can make one sub assembly, you can use that sub assembly in other assemblies as well, not just this one, and share those across files. I hope that was useful, and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.